All right, I have a MEP 531 Alpha generator here, and everything that I'm about to talk about also applies to an MEP 501 Alpha generator, which is the 28 volt DC version. This 531 Alpha is the AC version that puts out the 120 um, volt. Anyway, and what I'm gonna talk about is priming the fuel system. Um, I figured this would be a good opportunity I just got this generator in a trade, and the way it normally comes from auction is with all the fuel filter taking out, taken off and the fuel lines completely taken off. That's how this one came. Of course, this fly is going to bother me while I'm trying to record. Um, I already put new fuel lines on. I found some fuel clamps. I put a fuel filter, a new O-ring on here and I put some fuel in this tank, but I have not gone any farther. The reason why I wanted to talk about priming this system is if you're unfamiliar with it, it could be a real pain in the butt. If you can see here, I have a slave cable hooked up so I can use the electric start portion of this hooked up to my MEP802 Alpha. Highly, highly recommend using the electric start to get this primed, because if you're trying to pull start this, you're, you can be really strong. You can get away with it with pulling the pull start winding off and putting a drill on that nut, but then you risk the nut coming loose. I recommend just finding a way if you're working on these, even if you have to undo this, hooking up 28 volts to use the electric start. So before you even mess with anything, make sure that this fitting right here is not gonna leak. This one already had a brass upgrade on it. A lot of them have the same rubber fitting that the larger generators have. And they'll be rotted out, and as soon as you put fuel in here, it's gonna start leaking all over the place. These ones are rubber, but they tend to last a lot longer. Make sure the tank isn't that dirty. This one was in pretty good shape. It only has like, I think 20 hours. Make sure that this bowl is clean that's why I got a new filter and a new O-ring. You can get away with not replacing the O-ring a lot of times. This is 5 16th fuel line. One thing that is gonna help you in the priming process, make sure this is not kinked. Make sure when you run it from here to the fuel pump, it does not go higher. That's why I put this zip tie here. It's not kinking it, but it's holding it tight enough so when it's running, it's not gonna vibrate through. Fuel's in here, it's running through to here, a lot of times on here, this facing down is open. Now you would think, this is what throws everybody off. Oh, this is open, why isn't it running? You have to, this first screw, open it, that's a bleeder. You can see the fuel just started to flow in there. Leave that open, let the fuel flow in, then you're gonna see air and fuel start to come out of this screw, or you should. Let it bleed, it's gonna make a mess. Just let it bleed out. You might need to open it up even some more. I usually let it go until it starts dripping. Then the next one. Before I start going any farther, I forgot to mention, if you notice over here, this hose clamp is loose, and I left this not tight over here. The reason being is as we're working our way to bleed the fuel out, I wanna see some fuel come out over here when we get to that point, so I didn't tighten it up. The next one is this. We're gonna open that one up and wait till we see some more fuel bleed out of that. We see it dripping. Now what that should do is release a lot of the air so that we start to see some fuel come out over here but if this is sealed good enough over here, it might not actually flow out like because this is a pretty tight barb fitting. So what you might need to do is pull this off and make a mess because you want to make sure that you're going to get, okay, see fuel's coming out, put it back on. So we made sure, did you see the fuel come out? Make sure you got fuel coming out at your pump. So you got all that air bled out, at least as much as you can get without running it. Now I'm gonna tighten this up, 
because the next thing that will throw all this off is if you have any way for air to get into this system while it's running, it'll cause the engine to stutter quite a bit. So the next point in the system that you need to purge all the air out of is between the injection pump and the injector. Now, you can crack up top at the injector. What I found that works perfectly fine for me, some people might disagree, this is where the electric start comes in play. Hold the decompression lever down, and I'll do this for 30 seconds. Make sure you engage your fuel down here and just crank it over. All right, so that was a 30 count. I'm letting the starter cool off. One thing that I'd like to add while we're sitting here talking, I didn't have to do it on this one. If there's any sign that these bolts have been taken off and this injection pump has come out, you wanna undo this little inspection hole right here, remove it, just this one bolt, and you wanna make sure by moving this to the middle that the little I don't know what you would call it, but there's a nipple on this pump that controls the throttle and the delivery of the fuel, that it's inside the governor fork. Because a lot of people that are ignorant to these don't know any better and they just put it in and the engine could run away from you. Now what I'm gonna do, it may or may not have primed it. Now I'm just gonna crank it over, see if the engine will start to start. So it did start to get fuel. So now it's gonna stutter for a little bit because it's barely got the air out of the injection system side of it. It may or it may not stall out. Okay, so it stalled out. So now what I'm gonna do, because I know that it got a good chunk of the air out, is I'm gonna hold the decompression lever again and I'm just gonna let do like, say like another 10 seconds. And then I'm just gonna let go. And you might need to just kind of continually repeat this process. And as you're repeating this process, it's just gonna get better and better. But you can see already, it is slowly getting better. It may, it may be able to just sit here and not even stall out again. And the RPM is gonna come up. So how you can tell it's getting better is if you look at your gauges. So it's running at proper RPM if the gauges say 62 to 63 hertz on the hertz gauge. You can probably hear it now. It's still stuttering just a little bit, but it should be at where it is right now. Then you wanna put some load on it, at least like say like a 70 to an 80% load to purge the final amount of air out of the system. Cause until you run it on load, that won't purge all the air out. And it's pretty well cleared itself out now. So I have a, just a heat gun hooked up to it, 110. That should be about like the 75% load. Well, I know it is. What I'm gonna do is go close the contactor. You'll hear the generator load up a little bit and then you might hear it stutter again. Sometimes they don't, sometimes it does clear itself out, but we'll see what happens. It didn't even seem like it stuttered that much compared to some of the other ones that I've done. So you shut these down if you're unfamiliar and you should give 
If you've been running it for an extended period of time, you should give it like five minutes of cool down or whatever without any load on it uh, to let the stator and everything cool down. And there is supposed to be a quarter inch return line that runs to the injector that I did not have on there. You could see from when I was priming the system some of the excess that came out. In a nutshell, if you just got one of these and you're having a trouble priming up the system, uh, there's that with some extras. These are pretty simple machines, but if you do want to have some more videos and stuff on these series generators, I got a couple of them now. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I've considered starting to carry some parts for these on my store. Let me know that too if you're interested in it. But uh, thanks for watching, and if you found it helpful, leave me a comment too.